Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Today you're gonna come along with me to recreate a few vintage layer styles that I've handpicked and recreated from scratch. A good layer style could really help your text pop and give your designs some depth. So I'm here to show you how we can do just that. Before I start, make sure you like and subscribe to see more from me. I post content like this every week to help you become a better designer. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and you will be saved from God's rapture. Let's get started. So I've compiled a few references here and then gone ahead and recreated them from scratch. And now I'm taking you along to do exactly that with me all over again. Let's just get right into it. So this champions graphic, these kind of layer styles are an absolute classic and you see them across a ton of vintage designs. So it's definitely good to know how to create something like this. This is actually three different layer styles, but they're all just kind of iterations of each other. So from one to the next, we'll just be changing the colors or something like that. And I'll show you all of that in just a second. So let me go ahead and just clear the layer styles and all these and we'll get started on making these from scratch. I want to mention that I'm not really a font guy. I don't know what fonts these are. I just kind of guessed and picked a similar looking serif with the Champions of the World Series. And then I used Times New Robin on the 1997 over here. So on the World Series and Champions, it's clear face heavy. I know that's not the original font, but it's the closest I could find. And then again, Times New Roman on the 1997 here. Cool, so first I'm gonna start with the champions. I'm gonna open up the layer styles for this. And the first thing I'm gonna add is a color overlay to get that kind of aqua color on this text right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and check on the color overlay. And I already have this set from before, but obviously when you're making a layer style, just choose whatever color you want. I went ahead and sampled this color and then used it on this color overlay, but feel free to pick whatever color you want. Next up, we have a few strokes on this layer style over here. So I'm just gonna add the first stroke this is going to be an outside stroke and we're going to set the color to black. We're just going to try and match as closely as we can the size of this outside stroke onto our actual graphic here. So just play around with this until you feel it's right. Or if you want to, you can copy my settings. But as always, I recommend you experiment with this stuff and find something that works for you. So I'm going to use about maybe 10 or 11 here. I shall go with 12. And then we have another stroke that is on the inside of the text. It's a white stroke that you can see right here. We can tell this is on the inside because it's kind of clipping into some of the text here. This is just something you figure out after making a shit ton of letter styles. But yeah, so let's go ahead and add another stroke by pressing this plus icon here. And we're going to set the color of this stroke to white and then set the position to inside. And this is a little bit too much, so I'm going to bring this down to maybe six or seven, maybe even eight. Looks about right to me. Yes, yeah, so we're getting pretty close now. We get two strokes and the color overlay. Now we actually have one more stroke, which is kind of hard to see, but it is a another white stroke. We can see it is kind of going behind the black stroke here. So let me go ahead and add that as well. And since we're on a white background, you can't really see this. So I'm going to add the stroke and then make it a color like red so that I can see it on top of the white background. And make sure this stroke is the last of the strokes. That way it falls behind um, both the inside stroke and the outside stroke. And so when we increase the size, kind of layered behind both of those just like this stroke up here is so i'm gonna set this to about i don't know 22 maybe it seems to be just about that big in the reference and then i'm gonna change this back to white now that i can see it i'll press ok and boom now we got our three strokes our color overlay and we got one more thing going on here and it is this drop shadow beneath the text over here so go ahead and turn on a drop shadow and you'll see this is absolutely not what we want so how to fix this is to go into the settings and turn the spread all the way up make sure the size is pretty low maybe even zero i'm going to turn it up to about four just to make it close to the reference and then we're going to change the distance of this so that we can actually see it behind all these strokes so this is basically putting a copy of our text layer behind all the effects we have and that's the kind of look that we're recreating from the reference up there the reference actually has a bit of an angle to it so i'm going to go ahead mess with this until we get it looking just right the reference also has a bit more size to it so i'm going to go ahead and increase size as well and that's going to kind of bloat it up and soften the edges a bit all right that is looking pretty good to me so i'm going to go ahead and press ok on this and i'm going to copy and drag this layer style onto the world series text and from there we're going to recreate the effect that we have up there which is just a switcheroo of the colors. First off, since this text is a little smaller, we're gonna to wanna to scale the layer styles as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click on the effects here and go down to scale effects. We'll change this to about 50 or 60. I think 60 is looking good. So we'll go and okay that. And let's go into the effects panel here. And the first thing we'll notice is that the color of the text obviously is black. 
and the color of the stroke is what the color of the text used to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and check out the color overlay in this. I'm just gonna copy the hex code so we can use that for later on the stroke. Then I'm gonna set this to black. Then I'll go to the first stroke here and actually no, it's the second stroke. We want to change the black stroke on this. So the second stroke and I'll change the color from black to the hex code or color that we just used earlier. And I'm also gonna mess with the first stroke a little bit because that inside stroke is a bit much. So I'm gonna change that to maybe four or three or something. I think that looks good. And then all we have to do after that is mess with the drop shadow a bit. Just kind of make it more size and maybe less further away. This is looking pretty good to me. I think we got pretty close, but I do actually want to change this inside stroke to a center stroke because on this serif, we have some really tiny lines in here. And when we do an inside stroke, especially on small text, it makes them even tinier and we don't want that much. So we can change this to either a center stroke or an outside stroke. I'm just going to go with center for now. And that looks fine. And there we go. We've kind of emulated these top two layer styles over here. It didn't even take us that long. Now we've got one more layer style left and it is this 1997 over here. And this is just like I said, an iteration of the other layer styles. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the World Series layer style onto this 1997 text. And it gets us pretty close, but it's not exactly the effect we're looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this layer style panel. And one of the first things we notice is that these strokes are larger. So let's go into the strokes panel here. I want to make this white stroke a little bigger. And I also want to make sure it's set to either center or outside so that we don't lose too much detail on those small lines in the air. Next up, we'll go to the second stroke, which is this aqua color. And we'll also increase the size of that. It looks about right and matches our reference. So let's go now to this third stroke. And this is actually a black stroke in the reference. We're going to change the color of this to black. And then we're just going to drag the size up until it matches our reference. Okay, cool. Looks pretty good to me. Maybe the drop shadow can use some work. I think it's just more distance out from the text. So we'll just go ahead and change that. Turn up the distance. And then maybe the angle as well is more coming from the left. So let's change that. Cool. And now we've pretty much emulated all of these letter styles and based one off the other and just change a few things around. And now we have three separate layer styles with all similar looks, and they all have a super sick vintage feel to them. Cool. So next up, we've got this Chicago layer style. Again, I don't really know the fonts here. I just picked whatever was closest to the reference. I'm using this font called Ederson. It's a nice script font. So let's get started on this one. I'll go ahead and clear the layer styles on this. And now we're just left with our plain text. And again, we're gonna start by getting the base color down. So this is actually a gradient overlay instead of a color overlay. And you can tell because there's a gradient there instead of a color. Is that patronizing? Sorry. All right, well anyway, we're going to turn on that gradient overlay. And this is obviously not the gradient we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go and just click on the default gradient that's a black to white. And the angle is also off. So I'm gonna set this to zero and that's gonna get it going from left to right. Oops, I need to do that. Perfect. Otherwise, these are all the default settings. You might notice that I have some texture going on here. There's just some noise that I've clipped to the layer styles group so that it can look more accurate to our vintage references here. But you don't have to do that. Anyway, it is now time to match the colors to the gradient on our reference. So I'm gonna open up the gradient panel here and I'm going to set the leftmost side here, the black to this yellow that we have here in our reference. And this is kind of a really opaque yellow. So I'm gonna turn the saturation all the way up. And then secondly, we have this kind of salmon color that's in the mid-tone. So I'm gonna click right in the middle here and I'll change that to a similar color. Let me go ahead and color pick that out and see how close I can get to that. All right, and then lastly, we have this really deep red. So I'm going to click on the far right picker over here and set that to a nice deep red. Let me try and get that perfect. That looks good to me. Cool, let's press okay on this. Press OK again. And one thing you'll notice is that this gradient is not really as sharp or as harsh as the reference gradient. And to get it looking like that, something we could do is mess with the scale here. So if we bring the scale down, the gradients start to blend into each other in a more harsh manner. So there's less of a fade between them. So we can turn this down to something really low, but we're still not getting quite the effect that we have up here in our reference. So I'm gonna go back to the gradient panel here, and now we can mess with the blend bias of these colors. So we have this little diamond icon in the middle, it allows us to change how one color blends to the next. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag these until it looks right. Obviously you don't have to do this for your layer styles. You're not gonna be, or maybe you are, but most of the time you're not gonna be recreating exactly a layer style from a reference. So 
obviously just play with this and find something that you like. I'm going to go ahead and mess with these colors until I get it looking close to our reference. Cool, this is looking pretty good. I ended up just duplicating the salmon color and putting it on either side. And that gets us this nice harsh blend from one color to the next. So now I'm going to press OK on this and I'll start building out some of the other effects. So the first thing we have here is a white stroke. So I'm going to go ahead and add a stroke here. And we already have that white stroke kind of set up from our previous letter style. I'm going to make sure this stroke is set to the outside position. You'll see why later. And then about seven actually works, maybe eight, maybe even nine. I'm going to go with eight here actually. Cool. Now we have another stroke on the outside, which you can see if I zoom in here is sort of a black stroke. We are on a black background, so you would not be able to see that. And that is why I'm just going to add it and set the color to like a blue or something, something that you could see. Well, obviously, if you have some graphics or whatever behind your text layer, then you could set this to black and it will work just fine. So I've chose this muted brown. I'm just going to press OK on that and move on to the next effect which is this inner shadow that we have here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the inner shadow. This is obviously not what we want. I'm going to reset this to default. I don't know if this is your default. Maybe this is something that I set myself. But either way, you're going to want to bring the choke all the way up to 100. Turn the size down to 1 and then play with the distance. I'm going to turn the distance down to about, let's go for 6. Looks sort of close to our reference. Maybe 5. And then the angle is a bit off. So let me just play with that until it looks as close to our reference as possible. Cool. Looks like we replicated this pretty faithfully. I'm going to go ahead and add some other effects in here because I feel like it could be cooler that way. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a drop shadow and we're using the same drop shadow settings from the other layer style. So if I turn this to white or something you can see on the background, you can see it's pretty much just a copy of our text layer drop shadow down and it's a pretty cool effect i'm going to change the color to something like maybe that red that we had before would be cool if i could get that again all right that's looking pretty cool now i'm actually going to add another drop shadow so i'm going to press the plus button on this drop shadow and then i'm going to go to the one that's on the bottom that way it falls behind the original drop shadow we just made and i'm going to crank the size up and that is basically going to thicken our drop shadow and then when i change the color you'll see that it works sort of as a stroke on that drop shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a color here that looks cool. Maybe we'll go with uh, maybe an aqua blue or something. I'm also going to change the size down because it is a bit much. All right, I went with kind of a salmon or orange here, and that looks pretty cool to me. I'm going to press OK on this, and obviously we deviated a little bit from the reference, but I just wanted to show you guys some other cool effects that you can make using the layer styles and how we can make boring text pop and maybe even add a little depth using something like these drop shadows which kind of makes it look 3D. It's a very cool effect. All right, moving on to the last effect. This one is sort of a very nice and popular desert chrome effect, and it is the toughest one we've had to do so far. So let me just get right into this and show you how to make it. I'll go ahead and clear the layer styles on this, and here we are starting from scratch. So first things first, just like all the other layer styles, we're going to go ahead and get the base color out of the way, and that is this very nice desert chrome, red to white to blue gradient. It's like a sunset landscape. Very cool. Let's go ahead and add that in our gradient overlay over here. All right, so this one's pretty straightforward. You just have to pick out an orange, a white, and a blue. So I'm going to go ahead and do that in our gradient panel over here. So at the bottom or on the left-hand side, I'll pick a nice kind of melt orange, something very deep with a lot of tone to it. Nice. And that is going to fade to this white, which I'll bring in closer to our mid-tones. And then I'm going to add a blue over here on top. So let me just double click that and change this to a wish sort of aqua. Very nice gradient we got going on here. Similar to the other gradient, we want to change how this blends a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK and then mess with the scale down here just by turning it down and we get more of a harsher blend between the colors, which I believe the reference does. I'm not very sure because this is super low quality, but I really like the layer style. And that's why I grabbed it to show you how to make this. So obviously I can't get it perfect to the reference because I can't really see the reference, but I'm going to get it as close as I can and add some effects that I think you'll enjoy. Cool. So next up after the gradient, we have a stroke on this. So I'm going to go ahead and click on our stroke and I'm just going to leave the color as white and try and get this as close as we can to our reference in terms of size. And you'll notice that the stroke on our reference is kind of chromed out. It's very cool, but we can't really get that with just a simple stroke here. The most we could do is change the field type to a gradient and maybe try a chrome gradient here. 
I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to show you a different way. So I'm going to change this back to color and we're going to go into our bevel and emboss. Once we have that on, these are the default settings. I'm going to change the style to stroke emboss. And now that's going to appear on our stroke. And we can mess with the size of this bevel and emboss to get it looking a little more right with our stroke. So I'm just going to mess with this and see whatever looks best. Obviously, this isn't looking too chromey yet. So to get it to that point, I want to mess with this gloss contour here. So I'm going to go ahead and open the contour editor. And for the preset, I'll choose double ring. And that gets us this really cool chromey effect. So I'll press OK on that. And then I'm going to mess with the size of this a bit more. And I'll also mess with the size of the stroke. Now that we have all the bevel and emboss stuff set up, I can change the stroke to be larger. And that is going to interplay with the bevel and emboss. So obviously this part is up to you. Just find whatever size you think looks best. I'm going to go with something like maybe 12. I think that looks pretty good. All right. So now I'm going to go back into our bevel and emboss and change the size a bit. Make sure that matches with our stroke. That's looking pretty good. We can also change the opacity of this shadow mode over here. If say you want some darker contour in this, I'm going to leave it around the middle range, maybe 50, 60. But of course, play with this to your liking. Next up, we're actually going to add another stroke. So I'm going to go to the stroke and I'm going to press the plus icon. And this stroke is going to be positioned on the inside. You can see that also interplays with the bevel and emboss, but it's a bit too much of an effect. So I'm going to change the size down to maybe somewhere, maybe around six, I think looks good for this. Cool. So we've got this nice desert chrome effect kind of going on here, but it's still missing a little something. And that little something is an inner shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this inner shadow and I'm going to reset that to default and I'm going to bring the size up and that's going to give us a soft gradient on the shadow. And then I'll also turn the choke up, which will harshen that gradient just a little bit. I'm going to play with the size and turn that down just to compensate for that choke. And finally, I'm going to turn the distance down so that affects mostly the top portion of our text. Make sure the angle is on 90 for this. I'll also set the blending mode to linear burn and that's just going to make the shadow interplay more with the color that we set in our gradient overlay. This is a little bit harsh on effect, so I'm going to turn the opacity down as well and set that maybe to, I don't know, 40-ish. I think that looks good. This is looking pretty solid. I would say that we're pretty much done here. I'm going to go ahead and add another effect that the reference doesn't have, but I think would fit this layer style very well. And that is another inner shadow. And this one's going to be a bit harsher. So I'm going to press the plus on this inner shadow. I'll go to the bottom one here. And then I'm going to turn the size down a bit. Turn the choke up a bit. And turn the distance down. I think I actually need to turn the choke up a little bit more. Kind of get that harsh, almost stroke look on that. Looking good. I'll turn the opacity down just a little bit more. All right. And now we have this really cool and tasteful desert chrome effect. It's got this nice chromed out stroke. And of course, the sunset gradient as the base color for it. And that's gonna do it folks. Look at how beautiful these layer styles are. And we created this all from scratch. I really hope you learned something from this video. This was a fun one to make. Um, remember that I make content like this every week to help you become a better designer. So definitely go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that like button and make me happy. Hopefully now you feel a bit more confident in your layer styles game. You can go ahead and create some cool vintage graphics with this. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the support and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.